So good morning, folks. Uh, welcome to this Tech Talk webinar from Sunset Learning. Uh, my name's Bruce Wilkinson. I'm going to be running through just a CIC V12 uh, and CCE V12 update um, as far as the user interface is concerned. Uh, you might have heard a lot of talk about the single pane of glass or SPOG. Uh, and what we're going to be doing uh, then is just sort of exploring that and seeing the differences between uh, some earlier versions of CCE and, in fact, uh, CUIC as well. Uh, can I just do a quick uh, audio check? Um, can someone out there at least sort of acknowledge that you're hearing me? And I'll assume that everybody can if that's the case. Yep, yep I can, we hear, can you. hear you. Okay, great. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, so, as I say, uh, this is an introduction to the changes of the UI, primarily. Uh, we'll look at both CCE and COIC. We're looking at a 12.6 version. 12.5 um, had some glitches in it, I believe. Uh, I think most of those have been ironed out with 12.6. Uh, so, uh, anyone involved with um, V12 administration, um, either now or you're moving to it, uh, we'll probably get something out of this. Uh, we're not going to, you know, dig down into you know, configuration uh, techniques and things like that. That's going to be the subject of uh, future tech talks. Um, this just being, I guess, the uh, the introductory uh, version. So it's the V12.6 uh, SPOG. Uh, we'll look at configuration manager as well. Uh, I guess, just to see what's left there. Uh, and we'll also look at COIC, mainly the OAMP console, COIC being the reporting engine, uh, and mainly the OAMP console, uh, which is where most of the changes have been uh, introduced. You might remember if you were a COIC user for 11.5 and I think uh, early versions of 12, where it was a bit of a hybrid arrangement where you had the new look and feel, um, you know, the slick web-based version. Uh, and then when you went into some other um, configuration tools, you got back to the old screen, the old view. So as we'll see, that's all now been updated um, and all looks the same. Uh, so what we're hoping uh, is that, um, you guys are familiar with uh, CCE and COIC. Um, just, you know, we don't, we're not anticipating the need to sort of teach you those um, particular applications or those particular products, but you've had some exposure to it. Uh, and we're also uh, assuming that we've got a V12.6 deployment, complete and operational, and uh, it's software after all. So hopefully uh, things will work and screens will pop out where they should. Um, give me, uh, just jump in with sort of questions or uh, issues at any time. Um, don't, uh, don't feel hesitant to uh, interrupt me. Um, this is just going to be sort of a demo um, and I'm going to be pointing to live screenshots pretty much all the time. I don't does this, um, does this yeah. apply to CCX? as well, or just CCE? Like, the, is the CUIC interface similar in CCE? CCE? That's, a very good that's a very good question. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, th this particular presentation is just CCE, and certainly the SPOG is just CCE, not CCX. Um, but given that CUIC is now fairly closely integrated into CCX, I, I don't know whether or not that's been updated or not. Uh, I can ask um, and try and get back to you at some point. If do you not, have do you have also version eleven screenshots like where you're going to show the difference? Because then probably I could we could tell from that, or I could tell from that. The there difference some, between um, just like how it changed, you know, like from version eleven to version twelve. Uh, in CUIC. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, we can do that. Um, I'm just trying to think how, yeah, let, let me do that. I, I would have to sort of change networks and fire up some. Uh, okay, or, or, you know, offline later on maybe. But. Well, 
uh, I certainly can do that though, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, escape out of PowerPoints and see if we can't go to CCE to begin with. Um, so a couple of, well, sorry, let me do it another way. Two ways of getting to um, the CCE web administration. One is via the admin workstation and on the admin workstation of CCE, there is a shortcut under the administration tools folder, CCE web administration. If I open that up, it'll take me directly to this page uh, and we need, we need the fully qualified domain name to log in. So in our case, we're just using administrator Sunset CC. Whoops, what's happening? Sunsetc.com and our password is Cisco. Uh, and of course, this URL is, you know, is available from any browser. Um, you don't have to go into the admin workstation to get there, but um, uh, it, there is that shortcut. Uh, and you notice immediately that this is, you know, way different, no comparison, you know, whatsoever to the old configuration manager screens. Um, you'll find that down on the left hand side, there is a menu bar which contains the tools that are available in these blocks known as pages. Um, and it's essentially a subset. Uh, so not every, um, not every tool that's available, say under this infrastructure settings, is available from this link. Same with uh, these other uh, tools, they're just different ways of getting to the configuration tools. But let's you know, just take a look uh, through each of these and, and see what they're telling us and what we're able to do from here. Um, and I'll just do them not in any particular order, but just in the order that they are presented. If we start with the infrastructure settings, uh, you'll see we can do, you know, we can look at the inventory, uh, that is the servers that are deployed in our environment. Uh, we'll do some license management. There's an ability to do some device configuration from here. Uh, we'll set up our application gateways, our PGs, uh, do some log um, collections, etc. from this screen. So let's just take a look at some of those. Um, I don't want to sort of bore you by going through every single one, but if there's an interest uh, in a particular link, then you know, let me know uh, and we'll sort of go down there. But I've sort of chosen in my head the ones that I think are the most relevant to, uh, to, to people being introduced to this interface. Uh, the first thing under this uh, inventory uh, screen shows you all of the devices that are um, current in the deployment and it will pick up sort of alerts um, and errors in those devices as we go through. And you can see in our case here in this lab platform, we have uh, our, our ROG or our PG, side A and side B. Uh, we have an AWHDS uh, one and two, two CVP servers, um, call manager publisher and two subscribers. I'm not quite sure what those alerts are. Uh, so I don't think that's terribly Interesting, but nonetheless, uh, you know, it would show up uh, particular alerts if, if required. Is that alert under the operations tab? Uh, no, I just click this uh, alert button. Just and then under the operation tab, is there a, an alert under there? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, the, the, uh, the Axel service credentials probably not being defined in some way. So it's a bit of a configuration error, I'd suggest. Yeah, deployment so far. VMware tools, etc. So everything is virtualized, of course, in 12.6 as it has been uh, in the past. Um, and we've also got our, our primary and uh, secondary finesse servers. 
uh, it, to get back from, you know, uh, inside a page, one of the easiest way, I, I think you could use the back button, but it's always hazardous. Um, I am in the habit of going back to the overview, which will bring you back to that uh, page. Uh, and you can then sort of drill down a little um, license management, not that much to be um, said here. Uh, you can define the license type, um, which is a perpetual license. Uh, it, it uses FlexLM, you know, the, the licensing, the same sort of thing that you've probably been used to. Um, so you've got the ability then to sort of load up additional licenses, et cetera. Uh, if we look at our PGs, our peripheral gateways, then we get to look at and see, you know, a summary of the PGs that have been uh, installed. And notice it also gives us the peripheral IDs and routing client IDs. So it's really, uh, you know, a summary of the setup page uh, where we would have uh, entered those IDs, uh, client types, uh, and all the rest of it. <clears throat> Uh, let's just look at the device configuration. Can we see the log collection tab when you yeah, do that? Sure. Yes, indeed. Thank you. So we get to be able to uh, define, you know, the, the device that we're interested in, uh, look at a log collection, log collection schedule. Uh, we can define trace levels for each of those. Um, and collect logs. Now, this is a lab platform, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to see when I do this. Let's go down there. And it's collecting logs. Now, uh, again, I'm not 100% um, sure what these logs are, you know, compared with uh, command line logs and things like that that you can collect. Um, I don't know how deep this goes, but it's, um, it, it does give you a, you know, a decent insight into what's going on in the system. So it's dragging stuff. So let's just assume that when that, that gets um, downloaded or when it's collected, then I have the ability to download it via this action button uh, here. It's collecting logs right now, which is why we can't go through that process, but we should be able to get out of that page and notice that we can do it for, you know, some or all of the devices in our, uh, in our inventory. Thank you. Uh, oh, um, the deployment settings are here. Uh, you, for a given infrastructure, uh, you get to be able to choose, um, you know, the deployment type that uh, you want to look at. Um, now, it's not as it's not as flexible as saying, does that mean any hardware platform or any physical platform can be any deployment? Uh, no, but, um, uh, and, and in fact, if you ch try to choose, you know, a p particular deployment type and the hardware isn't, um, uh, won't support that deployment type, then the system here will come back and say, sorry, uh, no dice. You've got to do other things uh, in order to, support that deployment type where, where we've now got a packaged uh, CCE lab mode, uh, which is what our lab platform is. And what, it, what that will do is to present, you know, potentially different tools to you based on, you know, the deployment type between here uh, as the SPOG and what's in configuration manager. So it's not necessarily a like for like. Now, the, the reason that we're showing you the packaged CCE Enterprise is that Cisco are strongly pushing uh, the packaged 
environment in uh, 12.6 and beyond. Uh, and I think they've scaled up and I'm going to, I'm going to pick a number and say 12,000. I think that's the scalability, the agent scalability, but way beyond the, the original sort of packaged environment. So it's probably more likely that you'd be involved with packaged rather than, uh, you know, the traditional enterprise. And, and I guess, you know, what I would say in, in terms of packaged is that it's becoming more and more of a commodity rather than a, you know, a bolted together uh, solution, which is what the old or the earlier versions of enterprise were. Uh, and you would know, you know, you, you, you bolt together call manager, CVP, um, virtual voice browser uh, and, and such like. And they are still separate servers in the packaged environment, but they just get installed as a, you know, uh, one template. Uh, if we go to call settings, uh, call settings uh, is where we will um, find our route settings, IVR, bucket intervals, and, you know, some other miscellaneous tools under the route settings uh, is where we're going to configure our media routing domains. Um, our call types are all configured here. Um, let's just say add a new call type for argument's sake. We can call it demo call type. Uh, we would assign a bucket interval at this point if, uh, if required and click save. Uh, and we're assigning our call types. Uh, our dialed numbers. We would add our dialed numbers here. And let's just say one, two, three, four, five. We could give it a description. Um, something that is uh, new in uh, 12 is the ability to create uh, users, departments and roles, um, which is really sort of replacing to a large extent that, you know, the customer segmentation in earlier versions. Um, so you would, you would provide that here if you wish. And notice here that we're also get now going to define the call type. And so we'll put our demo call type against that dialed number and click save. And so we've um, successfully saved that. Now, one of the things I want to show you here, I think it will show up after I've saved. Uh, notice um, that we automatically have the dialed number records written against two routing clients. Those routing clients, uh, and we could see that if we went back to the inventory, happened to be our CVP uh, routing clients. If you remember back when you configured dialed numbers in Configuration Manager, you had to configure it a couple of times based on the routing client or the potential routing client that that dialed number would come from. <clears throat> Not so in this packaged architecture. And that's one of the benefits, if you like, of uh, packaged in that because it's packaged, the system knows what's going to be installed and is therefore, you know, able to make those assumptions and do uh, that sort of work for you. <clears throat> if we go back, if we uh, added another dialed number, This time I'll add the routing type as internal voice. In other words, I'm expecting this dialed number, you know, essentially from call manager. Um, I'll assign that a call type as well. Let's just call it demo as well. Click save. And if I now look at this dial number string, you'll see it's been assigned to the uh, routing client 5000, which happens to be uh, our call manager cluster. So a few, you know, improvements um, or, or benefits, if you like, of this packaged architecture. Uh, the expanded uh, call variables, uh, a list of those in the same way as uh, you saw them in configuration manager. Uh, your SIP server groups, 
uh, are interesting and they're going to be used in, <clears throat> uh, in your configuration and routing. Uh, if we, for instance, look at the VVB, SIP server group, uh, it just comes up with a, we should, um, notice uh, here we've got two virtual voice browsers in our environment. So those two servers are now created against this SIP server group and that can be sort of called up in our configs and, and elsewhere. I'm not sure why that's not happening for me, but let's move on, ignoring that. Uh, and here are our LightNet labels. Remember, uh, in our network VOU environments, uh, we created uh, labels. So here, are, here is where we have the opportunity to send those labels back to, um, notice this is the virtual voice browser, SIP server group that we saw before. So uh, our label 81111 is going back um, to, in this case, the virtual voice browser, as opposed to sort of a VXML gateway. So everything is um, the same. Uh, you, will, you will find you know, very similar uh, devices and, um, and settings but you know, with a with a different interface, our IVR settings uh, are where we're going to uh, build out all of our network VRU scripts, both micro apps, uh, and if we're creating scripts via Call Studio, uh, then that will go to the file transfers, and under file transfers, uh, we'll click new. Uh, we'll uh, browse to select a site. Uh, and browse to where we might have uploaded a particular Call Studio script uh, and add it uh, to the server. So here is how we do that browsing. Uh, this is a little bit tricky, just curiosities of browsers to, 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 uh, to find that. Um, but once we um, find a uh, or select a file, uh, then we'll upload that and then uh, it'll come here. They will then select it, save it, and that will upload it to the, uh, to the system. So there's a, some different steps, but you're attempting to achieve the same aims each time. Uh, let's leave email and chat just for the moment. We'll come back to that. By the way, there is a, an ECE session later on this afternoon um, and we'll probably be dealing with this interface a little uh, then as well as uh, ECE itself at that point. Uh, looking at um, say our user setup, our agents, nothing particularly interesting to know here, but it's just another approach um, where we might add our agents. Uh, descriptions, departments, uh, sites, desk settings are provided as well, teams if we're going to have them. Um, we can assign attributes to an agent at this time, attributes being associated with precision cues. Uh, we can assign skill group memberships uh, and um, assign this agent as a supervisor and assign a team um, if that's what we wanted to do. By the way, um, that you cannot create an agent as a supervisor unless that agent is um, already in Active Directory. That's a rule that came in around about, I think, 11.5. Uh, prior to that, when you promoted an agent to a supervisor here in ICM, let's just click Save, uh, that agent would have been automatically written into uh, Active Directory, which is probably not a very secure way to run an Active Directory environment. Uh, down here, the organization setup is where I'm going to look at teams, uh, create my uh, agent teams, assign my memberships uh, and my supervisors at that time. I can add my skills, uh, skill groups. 
precision cues and attributes are all done from this screen. Um, adding a skill group is nothing particularly tricky about that. It's called it a demo skill group. You'll assign the media routing domain, bucket intervals, service level thresholds, service level types. This is, you, you would recognize all of these screens from the 11.5 uh, environment. And we can also now add our agents to that skill group. And there we've you know, completed our skill group uh, configuration. So no more peripheral number for the skill groups. Uh, let me go back. Yeah. Oh, no, it, it looks like it's auto. Uh, uh, it yeah, I, I, um, I just, I didn't put anything in there. Um, and if I, um, similar to uh, five, if you don't add uh, a number, then the system will automatically provide one for you. Let, let's just, that's a good question, actually. Let, let's just see what happens um, if I go back. And add a, another, let's just say demo two. Uh, yeah, there's no place to enter it, so it's automatically uh, uh, generated. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Good, uh, good point. Um, that's something that I, I guess I might have not noted uh, up until now, but it, it's looking like it, it only you only get to get the system's peripheral number. That's nice because when you have to clean things up and you end up with empty range, yeah. empty numbers in the range, that's something yeah. that we deal with uh, a lot. So. I, I I do like that idea uh, actually, um, but I but I must say I'd never I'd never noticed it. Um, and you're you're right. I mean, it avoids the need to um, think up exclusive peripheral numbers and things like that, uh, um, which you're invited to do in the old version. Um, and I guess you know you never really use that. It, the, that's you know the peripheral number that the or the or the ID that the router uses. But uh, yeah, good good spot. Thank you. Uh, for the precision cues, same sort of deal. If we create a precision cue, then we're going to do you know much the same sort of thing, and we're going to assign our steps for that precision cue all from this screen. And our attributes, we're going to add our attributes from here, assign them as either proficiency or um, boolean. Uh, and give you know a default value, true, false in the case of Boolean, or something one through ten in the case of attributes. So th probably this is more of our day-to-day -day, uh, environment than any of those you know others so far, which is mostly our ads, moves and changes. Uh, business hours is interesting. Uh, we can create now. Uh, a business hour setting um, and, and assign that to a routing script, which provides for an adjunct to using admin scripts, you know, for, you know, open and closed uh, hours, etc. So um, if I Sort of have a force open or a force close, um, then that requires me to sort of um, put in a, a reason. Let's say I do a force close, uh, I might say emergency, okay, is the status reason. Uh, I would give it a name, a description, I'd select the time zone. Let's just go back here. Um, no business hours. Uh, we'll have a time zone, doesn't matter for this case, departments again. Uh, and now we can define, you know, what those business hours are going to be. If it's 24-7, it's 24-7. Um, if it's custom, I can turn days on and off, Saturdays and Sundays uh, as such. 
uh, and then there are special hours and holidays that you, that are you can add as as well to this whole sort of configuration environment um, and click save uh, and we've now got a, a business hour uh, service and what we can do in the script uh, use an if statement and say you know and and evaluate the the um, status of that demo bh business hour variable if you will so again it's a it's another approach to the way in which admin scripts normally were used to evaluate business hours and the like um, now I, I haven't i haven't really come to grips in my, in my head yet as to you know the real sort of benefits and differences of um, business hours versus admin scripts certainly it obviates or, or avoids the need to provide or, or run an admin script you know constantly um, and you can create different business hours for different time zones and things like that so I'm I'm thinking once you get into it and start to do your scripting in a you know a fairly sort of um, uh, detailed way then you know those benefits and those advantages would uh, would come to the fore uh, if we look at campaigns uh, then he, here is where we would develop our campaign for um, outbound option, agent based or IVR based campaigns. Same sort of thing is occurring here. Uh, question from Craig Can we get a copy of the recording of this session when completed? I believe so. I think as part of the subscription, uh, these recordings are available, but please don't quote me on that. Um, uh, go talk to your Sunset Learning um, account rep uh, and you'll get the very, very latest on that. But I, I, I think you can. Certainly we are recording, um, hopefully. Yes, we are. <laughs> My heart skipped a beat there <laughs> for a moment, so we should be good, okay? Uh, but uh, I'm not sure just what the process is uh, to get them. I, I, I don't think you can, you know, essentially download a recording, but certainly um, uh, you can access uh, these sessions. Thank you for the question. Um, let's go back. Um, organization. Departments, uh, again, the ability to now create uh, departments, let's say we create a department, Oops. tech talk. Uh, we might assign an administrator to that uh, tech talk. We don't have any administrators right now, uh, so we can't do that. Uh, but I think I should be able to save without creating that administrator. I'll show you how to create administrators in just a, in just a little while. It may, may even require one. I don't know. There you go. Uh, so if we now, you know, for instance, go back to say a call type, and we create a new call type. And we can assign a department to that call type. And, you know, this gives us a whole sort of administrative um, configuration, scripting granularity that we may or may not want to use. This would be sort of um, deployed in large, you know, organisations rather than, you know, simple organizations that just have a, a you know a flat structure so it gives us all you know that that capability of being uh, more in control if you will uh, so where do we get to uh, campaigns and departments so uh, there is a bulk import tool uh, and the bulk import tool allows you to import your agents um, dialed numbers I think call types are all um, 
available via this bulk import tool. If it's going to come up for me. What happens just by the way, while that's while it's loading and hopefully it will load, uh, is that what this screen will show is a number of templates. Uh, and the templates, uh, you can download the templates uh, and use those templates to add to your, um, uh, add, add to the information that you're, that you're loading. I'm not sure why that's complaining. Uh, let's maybe come back to that, hopefully, and see what's going on. Uh, Dex, desk settings, um, agent, uh, agent desk settings, same sort of deal as uh, before. Uh, here's where you'd provide wrap-ups on incoming, outgoing wrap-up timers. Uh, mobile agent um, is a, um, an interesting desk setting, which you would obviously need to create for a, for a mobile agent. Uh, we'll talk about that, I think, from 11 till 12, I think, my time. I think we have a, another session coming up uh, where we you know, can define the way that mobile agent uh, might work, uh, but there are you know a couple of uh, you know features and facilities that you can define here as well. Um, you know, enable auto answer yes or no, uh, idle reason required yes or no, um, and it gives a you know a number of uh, those options. Nothing nothing particularly different from uh, earlier versions, but as we say, just a different uh, interface, different uh, control. Uh, reason labels. Uh, you can add your reason labels uh, here. Um, the reason label type, not ready, wrap up or sign out. Uh, and they can be assigned as global reason codes or team specific. Uh, you may be, you may remember that back in Finesse um, or, or prior to 11.5, you created reason codes in, you know, Finesse administration. Uh, here they push this now to the UCCE administration. So that's, that is a little bit of a difference. Um, I think uh, I do remember seeing in an earlier version of 12, I think it might be 12.5 drop, that you could create reason. They, they hadn't taken reason codes out of finesse um, and you could have done it in either place, but they were recommending at that time that, um, if it's here in the web administration tool, then that's where you should do it. And I'm, I, I, I can't confirm, I wouldn't sort of put a lot of money on it, but I think that's now been taken out of the web administration tool as well. <clears throat> uh, in terms of uh, resources, call variables, layouts, desktop layouts, phone books, workflows, and notice these are also, you might remember these also from your finesse administration days uh, in 11.5 and well, since finesse was born really. So this has now been taken back from finesse administration and put into the web administration tool. You, you do the same sort of thing in, in the call variables layout, for instance, if we want a new all variables layout, so it's the same sort of uh, structure where we, you know, add rows and assign display names and things like that to our call variables. And that, of course, is then going to be presented to our agent desktop. Uh, we do need to define the, the layout and we use the same variable uh, in our script, which defines the layout that we want to assign to that agent at that time. Um, courtesy callback, uh, single sign-on, a few of these other, I almost call them boutique -y sort of applications, uh, are configured there in uh, the features. Uh, under the capacity tab uh, is where you get to be able to see for the deployment that you've got, um, how, you, how you're traveling with respect to 
uh, the resources that you're using. Um, these are, you know, at most the numbers of um, simultane or, or configured examples of those objects. Uh, and here we're seeing, you know, how many of them are there at deployment um, and give you sort of a percentage of those um, beasts that are used. Now, um, a question I have before one of you guys asks it, and I wouldn't want to answer it, um, is I'm not sure that there's an automatic um, uh, alarm uh, that comes up and tells me that I'm getting close. Um, th th there may well be, but I, I'm not sure how to get to that uh, at this point. Um, this, you know, this is all sort of very new to a number of people. And uh, just, as, just to do a little bit of sharing, um, not to sound offensive by any means, but uh, when we were building out uh, 12.5 and subsequently 12.6 and several other drops in between, we are dealing with you know, the Cisco development guys a lot because it's um, very, very new and we haven't seen a lot of deployments of this um, out there in sort of user land uh, just yet. But one of the things I did want to um, tell you that I think I skipped over was the roles. Um, we, we saw before, you know, for departments, there was a need to create some roles um, or, or, an, or an administrator for those departments. Uh, and um, here is where we can do that. We can create um, an administrator. Uh, and assign that particular um, administrator a particular role. Now there are, you know, um, roles that give that particular person or that particular uh, individual certain sort of structural and configuration rights. So you could imagine, you know, creating a user uh, and that user simply uh, has access to maybe bucket intervals uh, and call types, um, bucket intervals, of course, being a reporting tool. Um, now, I would, I would imagine that would only be uh, relevant in very, very, very large organisations, but the tool, tools are here to enable you to create that sort of uh, granularity. Uh, so um, let, me, let me leave the, the SPOG, the single pane of glass, for now, because I just want to quickly of that. Go back and re revisit configuration manager because that configuration manager hasn't gone away. Um, but the tools now are very, very limited compared with the earlier configuration tools. Targeting rules, application instance list, the application path list, etc. The user variable list are he still here in configuration manager. Uh, why, I do not know. Um, I guess there's some sort of, you know, deep embedded coding reason for doing it that way, but I, but uh, that reason has escaped me so far. Uh, is, it still, is it still correct that the single pane of glass is only for package, not for UCCE? Uh, no, uh, no. The single pane of glass still is available also in CCE but um, there's a different sort of relationship. Okay, okay. That, that's our environment, that's why I was asking, so. Yeah, uh, so you'll find, you'll find some of those tools uh, still in the single pane of glass, but um, others not. Um, f you know, for instance, you won't, you, won't uh, you know, maybe dialed numbers, for instance, because in an enterprise, you can right. do routing clients. Uh, right. you know, and, and things like that will probably still come over here to, um, Configuration manager. Okay, understood. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so let me now just maybe get out of here and I'm going now to oops, uh, CUIC.
logging into COIC, the reporting engine now, as the administrator, which is just a, you know, a, a cop-out way to make sure that what I should be able to access, I can access. So I'm not sure how many users we've created here at this point. Uh, and you won't notice too much of a difference uh, on this screen from uh, earlier versions of CUIC. Oh, thank you very much. Let me do it a different way, perhaps. The bad news is, just while I'm doing this, that um, whatever sort of browser frustrations you may have experienced in all of this sort of stuff, uh, <laughs> They, ain't, they haven't gone away to a great extent. Uh, so, uh, as I say, th this doesn't look that much different to anything that you may have seen previously uh, with links along here and the ability to access uh, reports uh, from that screen. But what is different uh, is if I go, say, to the report definitions... Your share is only showing... SLI 10 instructor. Oh, sorry. Why did that happen? Sorry about that. I must have inadvertently grabbed something. Ah, so now, now, uh, okay, so what I was saying was if we go back to, this is the COIC reports page and that looks, you know, the same as it did in earlier versions. Um, reports page itself, and, you know, it also looks, you know, quite similar. But um, if I go, for instance, to the report definitions page, then you'll see that we're no longer going back to the legacy view. Um, uh, but maintaining this new view, uh, if you will, for each of these screens. Same if I scroll down to configure uh, and look at, say, my users, then my users are now being presented um, in this new view as opposed to the older view, uh, which had drawers and, you know, just a chunkier sort of thing. Um, if I go to the OAMP screen, And again, this has all now been updated to the new uh, look and feel GUI. So my user management, where I might be able to create additional administrators, my device configuration, where I add um, servers to the cluster, etc., cetera, uh, the control center, where I can sort of uh, stop and start, uh, you know, shut down or restart particular servers. Uh, the cluster configuration, where I uh, set up both my Active Directory search sessions um, and any sort of SM SMTP settings that I might want to run as well. So, let me see. and, you know, schedules, um, which, which we haven't created. Now, um, I think you mentioned that you were interested in seeing what it used to be like, uh, rather than what it is like right now. Um, 
let me see if I can get there sort of fairly quickly. Any, any, any questions um, while I'm doing that? I, I was curious about the, uh, the analyzer feature once you get done showing the old interface. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to So what I'm what I'm having to do here. Uh, just turn on a couple of machines and why is that not working for me? Not a lot of browsers. Trying a couple of ways to get to the same thing, but it's not uh, it's not sort of working for me that well. Looks a better login button. So what you're seeing here, just by the way, is the lab platform so i want to go to where i know there is a So it's on a different VPN, so let me disconnect. I'll just close, in case there's some sort of caching going on, I'll close those. Yeah, it's taking, taking a little while to come up. But, uh, so uh, while that's happening, uh, I can't. I can't go back to the, because um, they're on different networks. Uh, this is an older version, which is, which is on a different VPN to 
Uh, That's okay. No worries on that. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, wait on. Uh, oh, no. No, it's, it's the new one as well. Um, yeah, so let's l try one more time. Yeah, no. Um, so the analyzer was back. Where did you see that in um, in the spot? Uh, th that's on the UCC uh, CYC interface. It was towards the top left on the main okay. bar. Okay. Okay, we don't help you identify what, what needs to be done for that. Because have other clubs that are working. Yeah, so this one, the other clubs are. Wow. <laughs> Gremlins are in. Yeah, so this way again. Okay, so uh, James has kicked off. Um, so the analyzer is really, uh, there's not a whole lot to see uh, on here. Let me just. I, I, I doubt we've got it set up, to be honest. Yeah. Um, let me just try another one. That's all right. It's no worries. Yeah. I don't no, want to delay I, anybody I, else. I, from I, can't, I can't show you that. Sorry. That's okay. I, I, yeah. No worries. Um, I apologize for that. Okay. So um, that... Um, I've always wanted to say this, uh, your time is up. <laughs> uh, so that's the, that's the session on the overview of the SPOG and CYC and um, CCP. Uh, any questions? There is a, another session coming up at 11, although it's likely to be five past 11 by the time I get my C 
slides and, you know, ducks in a row uh, on mobile agent. Uh, and then later on this afternoon, we have ECT, uh, if you're interested in calling those. But uh, that, this uh, brings to a halt the contact centre. Uh, any sort of questions or discussions or anything before we leave this session? Thanks for your time. Okay, well, thank you guys. Thank you for coming in. I hope it was uh, useful and you saw something new.